I'm, I'm Lucy Corrin, and this is where I write. This is my first novel. I wrote a psycho killer as a history for girls. It's the closest thing I've ever written to a memoir. It's based on being um, a teenager in the mid-80s in South Florida, where there were a lot of um, psycho killers on the loose, and sort of what it meant to grow up trying to imagine who it was possible for you to be when the dominant narrative that surrounded me and my friends was um, where you could situate yourself in relation to um, being a victim or prey or being um, a perpetrator of terrible things against usually girls. So that's what I wrote my first book about. It um, uh, doesn't have a lot of death actually on the page, although it refers to death on almost every page. And then my second book is this one. It's called The Entire Predicament, and this is my book of stories. And it came out in 2007. And um, um, I'm still really in love with this book. I'm actually kind of in love with both of my books still. I actually still feel the way I knew I... I thought when I finished my first book, it's going to be a first book, but I think I will always feel okay and happy that this is my first book. And it's true. I do. I still feel that way. So that's very lucky. I'm grateful for it. And I was in Akamal at the Radar Lab. I was working on a book that is now under submission. It's um, called Over 100 Apocalypses. And the book itself has four pieces in it. And one is a sort of short story in two columns. One is a really long story about a teenager who has to go pick out a madman um, at a madhouse for her birthday. And then another one is about um, a boy in the snow when California gets blown up. And then the pieces that I wrote at the Radar Lab are a hundred tiny microfictions that make up the fourth piece in the book. It makes up about a third of the book. And over a hundred of these microfictions have been published in various places all on the internet and in various print journals. And they got a good a mention, a special mention in the Pushcart Prize a couple years ago. And um, those were the pieces that I worked on at Akamal, and they were a lot of them were based on um, interviews that I did with the other people who were there with me, the other artists. And um, you know, because it's my contention that everybody has a lot of apocalypses, they have them, and that they have an imaginary, um, that they have a landscape somewhere in their consciousness um, of of the apocalyptic, and that if you just ask them, they usually have a really great story to tell. So some of the pieces in the book are based on interviews that I did there, and others are just the way that I write, which is piecing together tiny little fragments of ideas until they make um, a little miniature world. So one of the things that I did um, in, our, in our apartment was that, um, you know, for, for um, my work sessions, um, I, I worked on the dining room table and a graphic novelist worked on the other part of the table and one of the things that I loved was being um, so near to somebody who worked so visually so constantly and I think visually a lot and I went ahead and took a wall in the kitchen I think and taped up all of the little fragments that I was working on and reorganized them in relation to each other until they started to form little narratives and then um, use them to write between and to think about um, patterning the collection as a whole. But um, the combination of sitting there with a graphic novelist who's working um, in this very different form, but in a way that was applicable to my work, had everything to do with me using that method for my book. I, I've only recently moved to San Francisco. I lived in Northern California. I lived in Davis for a while, and I lived in Brooklyn for a while, and I got closer and closer to San Francisco because I went to the Radar series, and because I saw what an active, exciting, extraordinary community of writers was centered there. And I moved to San Francisco because I wanted to deepen the friendships that I'd made, and um, really feel like I was part of a literary queer community for the first time in my life. <laughs>